Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. In the first video, we showed placing the foundation for this garage. This video, we're gonna show you how to build it. It's a 20 by 25 foot garage. This is the final part of this garage build. Here's the first step, laying your perimeter. This is your uh, perimeter walls. And this comes as a kit. These, these uprights that you see here are for your studs. They're at five foot spacing. It's all one piece with the base. You can see how we're offsetting the anchors that hold this all down. Initially, they used to drill right through that, that plate, but it was too close to the edge for expansion bolt, and a lot of times it would break the concrete. So they came up with these things called Z-clips. Now your hold downs are inside a little bit, much stronger setup to hold down the building. We have a special inspection on those expansion bolts coming up. He's not due for a couple days, so we're going to keep moving on and just not put them all in at this time. Just enough to hold it together while we assemble these trusses. And the way these trusses are assembled, as you can see, they all slide into each other. Then they're screwed in with 5 16 inch uh, self-tapping screws. We build everything on top of each other. That way they're all built identically. So when you stand them up, on these little posts that are sticking up, sticking up off of the plate, you get a nice straight line. Now, if they were built differently, you would see that wave after you put the siding in. So this is a crucial step here, building them on top of one another so that they're all exactly the same. And before I stand them up, I wanna make sure that I've got enough of these hold downs in that so when I do stand them up, it doesn't fall over. At the same time, I want to leave enough that the inspector has something to look at when he gets here. Because that's a special inspection. Western Technology is going to do it. They're going to test the torque on them. We'll show all that and all the inspectors throughout this job process. Now, the slab you're building on may not be level at that point. So before you screw them in down all the way to the base plate, you pull a string line along the side of that building. And you want to measure the top of the eave that they're all this level. The inspector has arrived and what he'll be checking today is on um, the torque on the bolts that go into the concrete and here's the torque wrench. I got the half to three eighths and you got the deep socket already right? Yeah. They just don't film that part that wasn't in the dual set. My trailer on the way here on the 40. And I had the sockets, but I didn't have a deep one with a half inch drive that would turn it off. So I, I was I already put a video up on it. All right, boss. It's good, huh? Yeah, if you want a complete report, just put these in. Okay, we got, I got, I got one to put, two there, I'm gonna put, I wanna put this one, and one more right here, and then I got one over there, I got three more to put in basically. Let's, let's drill and put them in. Here's the process we're using to clean these holes. We have a cordless vacuum the, from DeWalt with an adapter that fits into the holes to suck out all the loose dust. Because we're testing these, these got to be tested at 100 PSI. That's what the wrench is supposed to be set at, but he only had a 200 PSI. So we tested them at 200, which is uh, double what it calls for. And uh, all we used was this Dewalt impact wrench, and it was well over 200 when he put his impact wrench on it. Go ahead and do your thing. I got three different reports that I have to be here with you. So I'm going to start back this up. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. So this is what it looks like when you've got the framing up. We still got to frame that back wall and the returns on the garage door itself. We also have, have a little bit of framing for two windows, one window on each side, plus a passenger door. And the kit comes with all those pieces that are going to make those enclosures for the windows and doors to fit in. So it's really, really nice. It's a really simple system here. Here's the back wall. Again, we're at five foot spacing. So we just slip them in there and then they button up right at the bottom of the truss. Now here's the front of the building. Here's your drop down and there's your garage door height. We're at, this is 10 foot ease. We've got an eight foot opening here. We've got a 16 foot door. We've got about 
two foot returns on either side and you notice all these little cross members that gives you your it kind of gives you your lateral you know structure so that it's not going to twist and turn so those are important to put on those those corner bracing plus we've got two hold downs on that two foot area on both sides and then here's your door this is where your passenger door is going to go right over here on this side you can kind of see it there so we have a small area that's bolted to the concrete in that corner and that's four hold downs right in that corner alone right here um tyler's up on the ladder he's putting some angle brackets in fastening all that together now this is a 3-0 opening also the windows are 3-0 so it's 36 inches width on the door and the windows and that's how you'll mount your um, pipes your steel that'll give you the height and the width and then you just slip your whole door frame in there fasten it in I actually glued it in and put tap cons in not tap cons but self tapping screws this is what uh, we we started to use some hand snips to cut this stuff with um, I didn't like that system so I broke out the Milwaukee cordless cutoff saw it's a 9 inch and I put a carburandum blade on it and I just started cutting this stuff like butter real quick real simple you see that osb there that's not in the kit that's just an extra that i decided to do and while i did that while i put that osb on there i actually plumbed every every vertical going up before i actually fastened to those posts and also what that does that's a four foot sheet of plywood coming up on the inside of the building and that gives me my workbench area it gives me my electrical um, that I can fasten to. You'll see that at the end, how we uh, arrange that. It looked, turned out real nice. Here's your insulation going up. This insulation also comes with the kit and it has a self adhesive that you strip, you pull that um, tape off, and then you have adhesive built into uh, every, every chunk of insulation you roll out. So it sticks right to the metal and then it sticks to itself on every seam. And the reason we're only laying one, uh, like a four foot piece of this insulation at a time is because if it's gonna, if it's windy, and if you try to lay more, it's gonna all blow down on you. So we lay one chunk, and then we put the metal up. You can see how it's trying to blow off there on the top. Because it's pretty windy out here typically. So you've gotta kind of do a things. Uh, you always, everything you do has to be, you have to have be thinking about the wind. Now we started at the bottom and we went up and that's the easiest way to do it. You could start at the top, but if you start at the top, you'd have to slip every panel underneath the other one. And if you put all your screws in, then it'd be difficult to do. You'd have to back out screws and stuff. But the beauty of starting at the top is that you'll know you'll come out right where you want to come out every time. So in this case, by starting at the bottom, I went three inches down below top of concrete with the first panel and then I just went on up and then the, f the final piece will just cut to fit. See we're just going three inches below top of concrete that way we have a good seal down there the water's not going to be able to get into the building. windows and doors are already in the windows are glued and screwed just like the door it gets a little tricky working into these windows with this metal especially when you have a piece that goes around two three sides of it simultaneously so your cuts got to be very accurate because you only have about a quarter inch play because you have to slide that panel back to the left to, and then slip it back to the right to get into that little groove of the window. And you'll probably have a quarter inch space on both sides. And that's going to get all cocked.
but whether it did or not, you're still on top of the window flange, so it's still not going to leak. It was pretty hot when we did this, you know, 100 plus degrees during this whole process. So we did morning work, early morning work, and then we did some night work, as you can see there. Because handling steel when it's 100 plus, it's not easy to do. There's a little cut out that went right around that door. And what I did after I got all this paneling up, I actually um, used some uh, tan caulking where the door where the door and the panels met and also around the windows. I went ahead and threw a bead of caulking around everything on all the seams of doors and windows. Now with, with the kit that I got, I had a lot of extra metal. Matter of fact, I've got enough metal to do about a the roof. I probably have about oh, 150 square feet of extra sheeting, roof and siding combined. Between the two, I have about 150. So uh, you don't have to worry about how you lay these out or where you start. You're going to have plenty of steel. What I did initially is I laid everything out on the ground to make sure that um, depending on how I laid the steel, I would have enough. So I calculated it out ahead of time. So I put everything out on the ground, spread it out, did the square footage calculation before I did anything. But I found that we had a lot of extra, a lot of extra metal, and we did when we got done. See, we got a little 100 amp, uh, there's a little box in the, for the electrical, a little 100 amp box. And then off of that, we're going to put outlets all the way around on that plywood. What I did on the paneling is I just screwed it up there um, large. And then I took my cutoff saw and then I cut it to fit. You can take the measurements, do it on the ground, or pull your panel up, mark it, bring it back down and cut it. But we just screwed it up and then cut off the excess. I used my little Vermeer as my lift. Worked out really nicely for this. Just enough height to get it done. You could do all this off of ladders too if you wanted to. We had both both things going, ladders and we had this little mini lift. You notice I have two pallets stacked because I needed that extra six inches. There, there's a look at the electrical layout right here. These are all 20 amp plugs and receptacles. Also, I have one set for a future 220 and that outlet right there to the left. I would have probably cut a hole in the side of the building for an um, AC unit and heater combo. That'll run off of that. You notice there's two hat channels at the peak, about a four inch, five inch gap in between. That gap is going to be for the vents. Also, the ridge cap will cover that entirely. You notice Eric on top of the lift. What he's doing is he's putting two sided tape on all the metal up there. That way, when he lays the insulation, it'll stick to it. He 
here's some of the trim going on. We got the corner trim. We have eave trim. And then we also had, well, that's gable trim going on right there. But the eave trim is underneath that uh, root, the sheeting hanging out. So before you could put the roof on, you put that uh, eave trim. You put the eave trim, then the roof. Then you put your corner beads. Your gable trim goes on last. Where the gables meet at the peak, you'll have a slight angle cut up there. And then you want those to overlap as well. You can see the insulation on the top here. You can see the uh, sheeting going on in the previous clip that we showed um, it was already on there, but this will give you an idea of the process of putting the roof on. Also, the metal that I'm using is a heavier gauge than their standard that they sell. They have three gauges of metal that you can buy from them. The inexpensive one, then you have the medium, then you have a super um, hot, thick gauge. This one is the medium, medium gauge steel. So walking on the roof here is not a problem at all. You can walk anywhere on here and it doesn't, it doesn't budge. You don't, I mean, you don't even have to walk at the joist because of the gauge of the steel here. The reason he's cutting that insulation out right there is that's where one of the vents are going to go. I'm putting two vents up here. And here's one of them here. Before we put the vent on, what we're going to probably do, this is where we're just laying out the hole for the vents. The first thing that's going to go on here is the ridge cap, and then the vent's going to sit on top of that. So you can see at the other end, they're putting the ridge cap on right now. Once they get that one centered, then they can pull a string line from end to end. That way that ridge cap will go on there nice and straight. All the screws on the roof have a rubber grommet. Well, the siding does too. They have rubber grommets on them. So it's important when you're putting all these screws in that you put them in, you know, nice and straight with the steel that way that rubber grommet makes full contact all the way around to get a good seal well so we got eric and tyler on the roof right now they're buttoning this up on the top and the way this is going to get fastened down this vent is we're going to glue and screw it on the inside of these vents it has a one piece of metal that's shaped just like a roof is and it drains out and it comes out on top of those flanges that are sticking out on the bottom the garage door also came with the kit the only thing that didn't come with the kit was the garage door opener and the windows and the passenger door but the main garage door and everything else that you've seen so far was was with the kit not none of the electrical though and that's dirt on the inside of this garage door because because after i got my kit dropped off here we got hit by a um, little micro tornado or microburst so they got a lot of dirt on them that's gonna all wash off though. Right here I've got some green board that I had laying around from other other purposes. And I'm utilizing that right now just to hang my uh, track for the garage door off of.
here's the track for the garage door going up and if you look at the overhead above the garage door itself I had to throw a 2 by 6 in between there because that's what the spring is going to get mounted to and there's a lot of pressure on that spring so that one 2x6 wasn't enough. I actually had to reinforce it because the spring tried to pull that 2x6 off the wall. How's it going? Good, how you doing? Oh, okay, here's the uh, city inspector now and he's just gonna give the final on this. He liked it, he liked everything. He said uh, how great it was to come up on a job site that he didn't have to um, do a lot of work and everything was uh, spot on basically. Hey, you got oh. Gloves. Oh, dang. No Dells. What thing sweet? Yeah, shirt. Oh, the sweet. Me medium. Cool, oh, perfect. And a hat. Dang, wow. Oh, you got your own hats too? Yeah. Oh, sweet. That's cool. This would be perfect like the river and stuff. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, have appreciate a good one. It, sir. Thanks you a lot. One. You too. All right. The job is pretty much complete. A little bit of touch ups to do, like. Um, get all the dirt off of the building and I might do a little caulking here and there around the windows Let's take a look at uh, The inside also, I've got to um, I've got to put some trim weather trim around this outside edge Here's what we're looking at really It looks pretty decent Let's take a look inside. As you can see, we've got insulation all the way around. We've got some LED lighting. And we've got vents at the top. We've got two of them. And there's the holes that are cut through the insulation. But yeah, lots of good usable space. We were installing the garage door and uh, the spring broke. So it's kind of like a pot metal. So when we put the, uh, when we were attaching the two springs together, it snapped the flange right here. You can see right there, just snapped that flange off. And we put the two uh, springs together before we even tightened it. So I've got to get a new spring before I can. Uh, you know get some weight off of these doors so I could start using the main door But anyway, you know after a hard day's work and you're out here and It's a hundred degrees right now about this time of year Fort Mojave, Arizona What you'll want to do is uh get to the river ASAP. That's what we're gonna do next Off to the river we go We need a nice cold refreshment to get there. You know, I got a GoPro 10 on my head. I just want to see if this thing's really, is it really waterproof? Let's find out. Look how clear this is. Let's see how it looks underwater. Oh, there's some people down there. Any 
anyway, that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button. That way you'll be notified as soon as we upload the next video. Have a good day. Hope you enjoyed the video.